Hey there, hey there. A uh, little change of pace here. I just thought I'd record a couple things that keep coming up in group classes and lessons, um, something that might be useful. Uh, switch to the djembe for a bit. Um, so I've lived in Africa about 20 years and in the west, north, well, not North Africa, but in West Africa, basically, northern part of Africa, and southern Africa, and traveled around quite a lot. And it's really tempting to make generalizations when you're there about cultural practices or the type of food people eat from one side of the continent to the other. And at the same time, I find those things always come back to bite you because every culture is different, every person is different. Uh, generalizations are useful, but not always the best. Nevertheless... I think it's really helpful for those who don't know um, in the Manding rhythm or djembe rhythm, um, there seem to be some family families of rhythm that really fit together by a few different um, uh, clues or parameters that seem to make, to give clues about uh, how to play, uh, the feel of the rhythm, et cetera. I'm not gonna go into feels um, about uh, percentage of the beat taken up by this by this subdivision and that sub subdivision, like play, playing a triplet as 30, 30, 40, or et cetera, et cetera. People have done that, especially Rainer Pollock, uh, a scholar who's done a lot of recording in Mali. I urge you to take, take a look at his work. Um, but what I want to talk about is just simply the families, okay? So I'm not going to talk about them all either, um, but just the concept. So. Uh, Often the break will give you a clue. This is not true with all music, because not all music played on, on djembe is of manding origin either. So everything gets complicated. That's what I was trying to say earlier. But there's some really good clues, like a few of the rhythms, um, maraca, soko, etc., will play with this break. Right? So with the time, it goes. So you hear that that is going on the beat and after. So, right? And then a lot of other rhythms, ternary rhythms we're talking about, like Manjani, Dunumba, will have this other feel, which is like a shuffle from America, like. So before the beat and into the beat. So I'm talking about the basic structure, a very common bell pattern, not to say the other the other structures don't don't um, work in these rhythms. That's why, again, generalizations are a little bit funny. But um, s but you can see in the break for those rhythms. See the shuffle in there. So um, that is a. Um, that's a uh, preceding discussion to what I was thinking about uh, putting out for today. And I, like I've said, I've helped a bunch of students with this, I hope, um, which is some solo phrases. I'm just going to give one solo phrase for soli, um, also known as suku in Mali or domba, um, circumcision rhythm, ternary, very common. Djembe goes here, one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, Dunud says that, and the Dunus are behind me. So, um, uh, main djembe part, so common. Okay, so there you got a shuffle, but that part goes into the other feel too, so that's a, that's a cross of this whole generalization thing. But uh, solo phrases for this commonly have a really powerful stroke like the slap, right before the beat, so indicating that same thing, so this kind of feel. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I'm just going to play one with all that explanation, one that I learned in uh, from a good friend who I used to play with all the time in Northern, Northern Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Mostly there were Burkina people, Burkina Bay people that we were playing with from Burkina Faso. So the Mali Manding 
big tradition, Northern Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina, Mali, Guinea, Upper Guinea. Um, and so it would go like this. So you can hear those slaps all the time, even though a lot of other stuff's going on. Now, a lot of times you'll hear this this phrase taught or played uh, m in a much simpler manner or less uh, less variations going on. So something like. Uh to help putting variation. So I put a few, but you see I, it's a much shorter phrase. The one that I learned from my friend, his name was Bay Koulibaly, um, that I played first, I just really like it because it is basically a series of these variations. And it makes one big melody, but it also is a whole bunch of variations that you can do all kinds of stuff. And that is the key concept to soloing in this style, in a lot of styles of improvisatory music, right? There's there are certain phrases that say, ah, that's this dance, that's this rhythm, um, but you don't just play them one after another. You you play them, and so that way everybody has their own way of playing it, but they're still in an idiomatic way suggesting, yes, I know this rhythm, this is what's happening, and often there'll be certain phrases that go with certain dance steps, so that's a whole, lev a other, whole other level of intricacy that maybe we don't usually find in America here. Um, except for maybe master players playing with master dancers. And, but anyway, whole other story. Um, so anyway, I hope that's helpful. And uh, I hope it shows how the break, a lot of the bell patterns, which I didn't demonstrate, but they would also have this kind of shuffle feel. And then the solo pattern, or the solo phrase, solo ride, a lot of them have that emphasis on the triplet subdivision right before the beat, which it would be the first beat in the group of two in a shuffle pattern. So instead of or if I put both so you see how that makes it it, it refers to that feeling and also it's super funky because the the uh, accompaniment, right, is playing slaps on the beat, usually. So I should have recorded it with two, two drums, but uh, this is just a quick project, so uh, I hope you all get the idea. That's why I'm playing the bell, so you see where the beat is. Um, super useful to know, and in another one, I'll get to another solo phrase from the other type of feel. So you see how that subdivision right after the beat is emphasized. Something like from Maraca or, so or Soko. Um, so thank you. Hope this is enjoyable. And uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, like I said, I get to teach this stuff all the time, luckily, uh, to real people uh, in person. So I like to just say, hey, I bet a lot of other people could benefit from this. So you know what to do, all that stuff. And uh, have a great time with this.